Okay, so yesterday, we did problems like this, where you have one mystery side that you need to figure out, and they give you an angle, and they give you another side. That is a very realistic thing in the real world. Picture like if you're building a ramp that you're going to like try to get your ATV up into your truck or something, and you need to build a ramp. You're going to have a triangle, and you probably would know one of your sides. You probably could tell how many degrees it is by like just putting a protractor on the ground and like measuring it. You could see how many degrees it is. You could be able to uh, figure out one of your other sides, how long the board needs to be using trig. So to set this one up, I first need to know whether I have the hypotenuse, the opposite, or the adjacent. So that all depends on which angle we're looking at. So look at the 46. Stare at it. Do you see the 46? From that 46's perspective, what is this? Adjacent. And what is this? And which function has opposite and adjacent in Tangent. So we know we're in tangent. On your paper, would you please write tangent? 46 degrees equals. And then this is the part where I like to put TOA, the opposite and adjacent part. You do not have to have those there, but I like them there just as like a little helper uh, symbols. And then the O for opposite tells me to put a 15 here. Now I don't need that anymore. And then the A for adjacent tells me that the adjacent side should go there, and that's an X. So there's my little equation. And that would be really neato if I only knew what tangent of 46 was. And your scientific calculator or graphing calculator, either one, could tell you what tangent of 46 is. The big difference is the one that can graph and the other one can't. What is it? 1.03 equals 15 over x. Can anybody verify the 1.03? All right, good. Then x now just has to be gotten alone. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. 1.03x equals 15. Divide both sides by 1.03. Answer is whatever 15 divided by 1.03 is. 14.5. 0.5? And I'll round it to 14. I'm going to round it to 14.5. It depends on what this round number was rounded to, so that obviously can affect your final answer. So you guys just round it to different places. So it's around 14.5-ish. And then we should put it in here and make sure it makes some sense. 14.5. This one's 15. This one's a little less than 15. And could that work? All right. So now, um, I guess the next thing I would investigate is how can I figure out an angle? What if I know two of the sides and I can figure out an angle from that? We're gonna, we are going to get there. So to start with, you got to figure out is it tangent? It's the same kind of question. Is it tangent or is it sine or is it cosine? And in this case, we have opposite and we have adjacent, so it's still tangent. Write this down. Tangent theta, that is the angle you use, or sorry, the little symbol you use, whenever you are trying to do an angle. Tangent of theta is equal to, and then opposite over adjacent, which would be 15 over 7. And now, I bet you some of you know that there's a little special key called tan with a little negative 1, but I don't think you know what it really does. Let me show you what's happening here. Good, just a second, you can tell me. Tangent theta equals 15 over 7. I know some of you know I'm going to push that button and then I will get the answer, but I don't think you know what you're doing. What you're doing is you're trying to get the theta alone. All right? So, so what are you going to do to get the theta alone? Nope, you're not going to divide by tangent. That's a good guess. Yes. Two to both sides. Say that again. That is correct. So here is inverse tangent. And why are we doing that? Because it gets rid of tangent. That's why you do that. And I, if I do it to this side, I have to do it to this side. I'm going to move this 15 sevenths over. And I'm going to do inverse tangent on both sides. And why? Because it's the thing that gets rid of tangent. All right, so now I got this and this will cancel. 
and so theta is now alone, and now I'm doing the inverse tangent, and that's what you type into the calculator. You type inverse tangent of 15 sevenths equals, and I know some of you knew to type that, but you didn't really know what was happening. All right, so final answer, what was it? 64.9-ish? All right, I'll round to 65 degrees. Okay. All right. Now to bring back some stuff I said yesterday. We just figured out that the tangent of 65 degrees came, was, was our answer of 15 sevenths. All right. Tangent of 65 was 15 sevenths. Do you have any idea what cotangent of 65 would be? Cotangent is the evil twin of tangent. Every person has an evil twin somewhere in the world. If somebody looks just like you, except they're like, wherever you're good, they're evil. That's the idea of a doppelganger. It's a German word for somebody who is kind of your, your um, it's like your twin, except they are opposite you. Okay, so where you're like really nice and kind to animals, they like, you know, take them and smother them in plastic bags or something. All right. So anyway, <laughs> if you, oh, what, that's a good question. What if I'm the evil twin? Then there's somebody just like you who's actually really good. Okay, anyway. Oh, is your twin your double ganger? No. This is an imaginary concept, and you'll have to blame the Germans because that's that's where the doppelganger thing came from. All right. So this is the part. Shh, quiet, please. I was thinking of my my uh, one of my friends who's got a cat, and he constantly threatens that uh, he's going to get rid of the cat because he just hates the cat because it always wakes him up in the morning at like 4 a.m. And uh, anyway, I love my cat, but okay. So tangent has its doppelganger, and you need to make a list of these things because this is one of the things you're learning today. Tangent has its cotangent is the one that is its doppelganger. So the cotangent of 65 degrees then would be 7 over 15. See what we did there? We just flip flop these things around and it's like, Kind of like an opposite, except it's not. It's a reciprocal. All right. So here's a list of all of them. Sine, cosine, tangent. Write these down. Girls, stop talking. Write this down. Okay. Sine, cosine, and tangent goes with the other, they're evil twins. And sine goes with cosecant, CSC. Cosine goes with secant. I don't know if you've noticed this. These are all just shortened. They're all three letters, but their actual word is like a full word. Secant, S-E-C-A-N-T is the whole word, but we just use S-E-C. And the last one is cotangent, and that's C-O-T. So again, the full word for each of these are sine, S-I-N-E, cosine, C-O-S-I-N-E, tangent, T-A-N-G-E-N-T. Uh, this is cosecant. Secant and cotangent. But the main thing I'm trying to get across to you is that these are evil twins of each other. Now, what does that mean again? So if I have the answer for one of them and I flip it over, then I have the answer for the other one. So let me give it to you this way. Where sine is... Here, I'm going to rewrite these things to make it clean again. Sine, cosine... And tangent, where sine is S O H. So, you know where I'm going with this? Cosine is ka adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is toa. Then the evil twins go like this. Instead of sine, what's the evil twin of it? Not secant, cosecant. Cosecant, what's the evil twin of cosine? Secant. And what's the evil twin of tangent? 
cotangent, they are all flipped. So instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it becomes hypotenuse over opposite, which would be like cho, where this was so. Cosine, so, ka, toa, right? It becomes cho, and then s, sha, kao. That's right. Somebody said social cow last hour. Kind of like that. Social cow. Tosha cow. It sounds a little Chinese, but I'm sure it is not. So, anyway. You had Sokatoa. Now you have Cho Shakao. And these tell you that the cosecant is really the hypotenuse over the opposite. The secant is really the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And the last one is the cotangent is really adjacent over opposite. All right. So they're all the evil twins. All right. So back to these kind of problems. All right. Uh, this, pro this one that we just did a second ago, we could have done it with a different function if we wanted to. But once this, the, these work the best, sine, cosine, and tangent, because there's a button on your calculator. All right. So this one again was tangent of theta was equal to 15 over 7. And we did inverse tangent to get the answer. But if we had wanted to, we could have set up the same problem and said cotangent of theta would be 7 over 15. But there's just no button for that. Okay. If you ever want to get a cotangent answer, you have to go do a tangent and then make it flip somehow. Do you know what the flip it button is? It's this one right here. X to the negative 1 button. That makes your answer flip. All right. So if you ever needed a cotangent done on your calculator, you do the tangent and then you just flip it. That's different than this. This is not tangent and then flipped. That's different. It's inverse tangent. And that's not the same thing as flipping tangent. Okay. So let's do another little uh, practice and see if you're really getting this. Uh, find theta. This one's tangent again because it's opposite and adjacent. Go ahead, give it a shot. Find that angle for me, please. You lost? Oh, you got it, okay. I do want you to write the equation down. I know that you don't understand why, but these equations where you have like sine of 30 equals 2 thirds, those are huge. You really have to understand those really well. So I need you to get used to writing them, even on the easy ones. Those equations become monster in pre-calc. You got a, you got a ton of them, and they're complicated. They're much more complicated than this, of course. All right. So this tangent, I told you it was tangent, of what? You always have a degree there, and I don't know what it is, so I put theta. Equals opposite over adjacent, which would be 5 over 2. There's your equation. And then what you would actually do on your calculator, we should be take inverse sine tan of both sides. Like this. And then these just cancel. And that's what you got to do in the calculator. And your answer is theta equals what? 68 degrees-ish. All right. OK. Now, if this is 68 degrees, how many is that? Nine, not 90 plus 68, 90 minus 68. Isn't it like 18? Oh, you're right. 18. Well, where did I get that? Okay. 22, 70, 80, 90. Good. Okay. So then tangent of 68 is exactly the same as if you had done what of what? Do you remember the co functions? Cotangent of. 22. <laughs> the answer to tangent of 68 is right there. 5 over 2. 
the answer to cotangent of 22 has to be the exact same thing. 5 over 2. All right. I'm just trying to stretch your mind a little bit. You don't even have to know that part. But I'm trying to get you ready for pre-calc. So. All right. Let's do another one. This one is not tangent. Write the equation first. You're done with this. We're getting this. All right. Did you do sine or, or cosine? Which one? Sine. All right. Sine of, I don't know, equals sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Four over six. And you can reduce that to two thirds, or you can just use the four six, and the calculator doesn't care. Final answer. Can you do the inverse sine of both sides? Theta equals what? Forty-one point eight degrees. That's all there is to it. Now, gets a little more complicated. Um, I don't think we do any more practice of those. One thing you need to understand is the concept of rationalizing a denominator. All right. First of all, denominator. That's this part. Rational numbers. Well, rational numbers aren't like this. This is irrational. So the problem is you need to not have irrational numbers in the denominator. In other words, what you divide by is really important. And when it's an irrational number, you don't really know what it is. Because when you have square root of 3, it goes on forever and it never repeats. And you're dividing by something that's kind of slightly unknown. Well, it's kind of like you're not supposed to divide by 0. Do you remember that? Okay, so you're also not supposed to divide by irrational numbers. And so it's better to rewrite this, and I just need you to understand how to do this. You multiply the top and the bottom by the square root. So I use square root of 3 again. Why am I allowed to do that? Because what's this equal to? 1. And so now I multiply across the top, and I get root 3. I multiply across the bottom, I get root 3, and root 3 makes root 9. And what is root 9? See how I got rid of the denominator square root? All right, I'd like you to try rationalizing this one. You're going to see it a lot in pre-calc. It's on one of the big tests that we just took today, in fact. So then this becomes root 2, root 2. Why can I multiply by the red thing? Because it's just 1. Root 2 over 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. That's called rationalizing a denominator. Now, here's the next concept. This is what's called the unit circle. It is incredibly powerful, and you're going to learn a lot about it in pre-calc. I'm just trying to introduce it to you so you have the basics here. All right, would you agree that this side right here would be x? That's the x direction, right? And this side right here would be y, right? And so if I were going to talk about this angle right here, it's not always 45. It, just, it could be anything, so I'm going to put theta. If I was going to talk about that angle right there, if I wanted to do the sine of that angle, what's sine defined as again? Opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, it would be y over 1. And what's y over 1 the same as? Y. So this is that weird thing that happens in the unit circle, is that the y is the sine. So this length right here, this height that we used to call y, we can call sine. In the unit circle, that is sine of theta. Take a wild guess what that's going to be. It's not sine. All right, I'll walk you through it. Cosine of theta is ka adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 1, which is x. So the cosine is the x. So this is cosine. So there's cosine and there's sine. Which one are we missing? Tangent. What is tangent again? No. Tangent is the what over the what? Opposite over the adjacent. That over that. And you just learned one of the big identities of pre-calc. The tangent is sine over cosine. So... If your tangent button broke on your calculator, somebody picked it off or something stupid, you could still do tangents on your calculator. 
you just find sine of the angle and then do what? And then what? After you found sine and cosine, you do what to them? You would divide them. And that would give you the tangent of that angle. All right. So that's one of those kind of cool relationships between tangent, sine, and cosine. The tangent is sine divided by cosine. All right, so what do you need to know? You need to be able to answer this question. What goes in that blank right there? What comma what? Well, I need to know how far over it goes, which is cosine. And I need to know how far up it goes, which is sine. And is it okay to just write those in there? If it's general and it doesn't tell you the angle, then yeah. But this told me back here that it was a 45. So... This is cosine of 45, and this is sine of 45. And your calculator can tell you what those answers are. So you'd grab your calculator, you'd do cosine of 45, and you'd stick the answer right here. And you, then you'd do sine of 45, and you'd stick the answer right there. All right. And why are they the same thing? Because it's a 45, 45, 90. Very good. All right, let's do another one like that. Here's one where it's 60 degrees. All right, try to remember. It's so easy to think it's sine then cosine because that's the order we normally say them in, but it's not. It's cosine and then sine. Cosine of what? 60. Comma sine of 60. All right, so cosine of 60, ka adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, I don't have any numbers on these, so what do I do? I just take my calculator and do cosine 60, enter, and it tells me what it is. And then I take my calculator and do sine of 60, and it tells me what it is. So I don't even have to know these signs. sides. I can figure out what that point is. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. This blank right here. I'm talking sine or cosine there? Cosine of what? Cosine of 30. And I know what it is. But it's going to be a weird decimal on your calculator. Okay, so you're saying that cosine of 30 is the same as sine of 60. You are correct. Those are co-functions of each other. So yeah, sine and cosine have that relationship where if these add up to 90, then yeah. But I don't want you to trade out and do different, uh, like do that. I want you to just say, I know that this is cosine of 30, and I know that this is sine of 30. And you can use your calculator to get those answers. Now, one more thing that comes up and is really important is those triangles that you already hopefully memorized yesterday. 1, 1, square root of 2. Remember those? What is that again? It's a 45 degree angle. And if I had this one, where this is 1, this is 2, and this is the square root of 3, then it's a 30, 60, 90. And the 30 is across from the 1. And the 60 is across from the root 3. Remember that? Okay. Does that come into play on these triangles? You bet it does. Because this answer ends up being root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And those are two numbers that are right from a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's just the normal 30, 60, 90 triangle goes like this. 1 2 and the square root of 3 but this 2 needed to be a 1 because it's the unit circle so they divided everything by 2 and that's why that's the cosine of it that's the sine of it and that's just an introduction to the unit circle you'll learn a lot more about it next year whichever class you're in not quite time for lunch